Welcome to Financial Documents, and I wish you luck with your exams. So the first financial document uh, that we're going to look at is the till slip. And of course, um, there's a lot of details from this till slip, a lot of questions that could come out of this. But for this video, I'm just going to focus on calculating VAT. How do you then calculate VAT if you are given a till slip? All right, so we've got a balance due at the bottom over here, but we cannot use that balance to calculate VAT. The total includes some items on which you don't pay VAT, VAT exempt items. And these are the items with the asterisk next to them. So there's three items are zero rated, they are VAT exempted. So no VAT is charged on those items. So the government does not charge VAT on necessities items that are necessities people need these items to survive from day to day so no vet is charged on these items so on the till slip those are the three items that are vet exempted so before we can calculate vet we need to subtract them so we will take our balance due total So we subtract the VAT exempted items, starting with the tomatoes and then the milk and then the brown bread. All right, so the 165 rands and 55 cents is the total we will use to calculate VAT. 165 rands and 55 cents. All right, so this total we are going to multiply by 15 over 115. Remember, this is uh, when you buy items at the store, the VAT is already included. So if you want to calculate VAT uh, when the VAT is already included, you multiply by 15 over 115 not 15 over 100. Please uh, see my finance video if you haven't uh, done so already. So if you take 165 rand and 55 cents and you multiply it by 15 over 115, uh, you'll be able to calculate your bet. In this case, 21 rands and 59 cents. So that is 20 one rand and 59 cents so that's the value of that item over there so let's move on to the second financial document all right uh, the second financial document is a statement bank statement to be specific also has a lot of details but i want to go straight into the the statement itself how to calculate certain values on the statement um all right starting with a how would we calculate a it's very easy. Uh, just remember, credits means money is coming into the account and debit means that money is coming out. So if we have a credit, we need to add. So if you want to calculate A, we've got the previous balance and there was a credit. In other words, there was money in. So we must add the two values. So take the previous balance. Right. And because there was a credit, money came into the account, we add 500. So our new value is 943.27 cents. So this will be 943.27 cents. So let's calculate B. All right, the same concept applies. We're going to take this balance, and but this time there was a debit. So we must subtract. So remember, debit means that uh, money came out of the account. So we take the previous balance, 644.27, and we minus the 15 rand because it indicates a debit. So then the new balance for B will be 629 and uh, 27 cents. Right, so that concept doesn't change. Again, we have 
uh, to calculate C, we're going to take the previous balance and we have a credit, so money came into this bank account. So again, credit we must add. So we will take 187. So if uh, if we add the credit, 6,500 rands, the new balance will be 6,687 and 77 cents. All right, then finally D, again, still using the same concept. Let's take the previous balance and again the debit. So money came out, so then we're going to subtract and because we have the debit, so we take the previous balance. So we minus the 6,700 because it's a debit. And you'll notice that the amount is in negative. It's also the last transaction, so that's the closing balance. What does the negative tell us? It tells us that you owe money to a bank, so it's a debit. So we must write it as a debit closing. All right, so we will write to the 29 rand and 73 cents. And next to it, we will add D up, indicating that it is a debit closing balance. You owe uh, money to the bank. Okay, moving on to the next financial document. All right, so the next document is the pay slip. This is what you get at the end of the month if you have a job uh, to indicate all your income and all your deductions. So let's go straight into the pay slip. Okay, the first thing we need to calculate is the value of A, which is the gross salary. Now, the gross salary is the salary before deductions. So if you add all your incomes uh, on your left uh, you should get your gross salary so in this case the gross salary will be um, the 41,805 plus the 1,398,43,200 remember that is the definition of gross salary salary before deductions, all right? It's the salary before deductions. Now, what about net? So the salary will be the salary after the deduction. So the deductions are on the right here, but fortunately, we already have a total of all the deductions over here. So all we need to do to calculate the net salary is to take our gross salary and minus the deductions in this case the deductions total to 25,108 and 47 cents so our net salary will be 18,094 rands 18,090 53 cents 53 cents all right so that's our net, uh, net salary the, sal the salary after deductions gross salary is the salary before deductions net salary is the salary um, after deductions all right so let's move on to some uh, questions one about the medical aid remember as a member as a worker your employer helps you this member on their own was supposed to pay this amount, 10330 but the employer is going to help, the employer is going to pay 1400 So now the question C is how much uh, end up paying. So we're going to take what he was supposed to pay, we're going to subtract what the employer is helping with to see what they'll end up paying. That formula is right here at the bottom medical aid contribution it's the total member fee minus the employer contribution so let's work that out quickly 10,330 minus the employer's uh, contribution so then they will 
only end up paying 4,810.6. Actually, it's 4,896. All right, then let's move on to D. D is the UIF, the Unemployment Insurance Fund. And we're told that it's 1% of the gross salary. It's usually 1% uh, for most employees. And in South Africa, it's always 1%, the UIF. So you pay 1% as the worker. Your employer also pays the other 1%. But here, let's just calculate the 1% paid by the worker. So it's 1% of the gross salary. The gross salary we have over here, we already calculated it. So we're going to calculate 1% of that. All right, so it will be 43,203. So we calculate 1% of that. So the UIF is 432 rands and three cents. Remember if uh, they ask you in the exam how much the employer pays, the employer would also pay for uh, 132 rands and three cents because uh, the employee pays 1%, the employer pays the other 1%. So that's how you calculate the UIF. All right, so let's move on to the last financial document. All right, so the last financial document involves a tariff structure uh, that is a sliding scale. So it's a tariff rate that is a sliding scale. So, all right, so let's look at uh, this particular situation. All right, so this household uses 13,3 kiloliters of water. So we need to look at the sliding scale that is given, the tariff structure, to see how much they'll end up paying. So let's look at step one. Uh, the first bracket. So here they will pay because they use more than six liters. Remember, this household uses 15,3. So they'll pay uh, in the first step. They will also pay in the second step because they use more than 10,5 kiloliters. And they will also pay in the third step because this is where they end up uh, their scale is where we'll, um, it will end up because they use 15,3 and the last uh, step stops at 20 kiloliters. All right, so let's do this calculation very, very quickly. So if we take the six, let's start with step one. We take the six, the maximum, and we minus the zero. Uh, we'll end up with six, so we can multiply that by the rate of the first step, which is four rent, 65 cents. In the second step, we can take the maximum again, 10.5, minus the minimum, 10.5 minus 6 will give us 4.5. And let's multiply that also by the rate of 17 rands and 75 cents. All right, then we move on to the third step. Now, remember at this step, um, they don't use the up to 20 kiloliters. They only use up until... 15,3. So we're going to take that 15,3 and not 20. We're going to take the 15,3 and we're going to minus the minimum 10,5. So 15,3 minus 10,5. Let's work that out. 15,3 minus 10,5 gives us 4.8. So they will pay for 4.8, of course, times that by the rate in the third step. So then we can take a calculator and work out how much this household will pay for water. So let's try to do that quickly. Step one plus step two. We end off with step three. So 
So the total that the household will pay is two hundred and there's two rents and forty three cents. All right, of course, there are more financial documents that could be tested, but here I just looked at the uh, tricky ones. So I hope this video helps. All right, thank you.